anecdotes for success. Level up with truth, meaning, trade-offs, perspective. Hey, Matt, here's our phrase for the day. Uh, as our viewers know, you have no idea what I'm about to ask you to talk about. And I mean, I guess we cheat a little. I try not to think about it too much, but it's embedded in what I do. So I'm going to say a phrase. You're going to talk. We're going to go for there for about 30 minutes. You ready? Sweet. Attitude of gratitude. That seems to be the the hot phrase I hear a lot of people say, especially a lot of influencers. So A, do you believe in it? B, what's it mean to you? C, take it a different way if you want. Attitude of gratitude, huh? You got it. And that's like... um. That's like, like you said, like the Twitter thing and influencers, whatever they happen to be on. Gotcha. First of all, before we do, I'm just been. The, have you been into the um, World Cup at all? Yeah. Uh, uh, I was out. I was out. We were on a uh, wine tasting. Uh, oh, right, Friday, right, right. Yeah. And I had to watch it on my phone for two hours. You talk about inconvenience, but luckily. <laughs> Luckily, by the time we got to the second half, we went to two goats and they had it on. So oh, okay. got, to, got to watch the second half with a bunch of strangers, tr strangers cheering USA. I know yeah. you're all into it. I, I love it. I, 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 I am. I have had it on since I got up this morning watching the, the games today. Germany and Spain play today, which should be a good one at two. So, um, yeah, I try to watch as much as I can. I love it. You watch them all, don't you? I mean, it, it's not just I, a USA thing. I'm most interested in the United States games, but I do. I watch them all, and and uh, I'm just peeking at it right now. Um, I just, I just love the game. It's just, it's you know, they call it the beautiful game, but I know why. You know, I mean, it's funny talking to people like it's zero zero or whatever, and that that to me, scoring isn't you know isn't where the um, always where the where the entertainment is in, in any sport let alone uh let alone soccer or football depending on what me, we're talking about let me let me ask you this then uh i feel like the people that really enjoy soccer because i i enjoy it like i'll watch it i don't i don't i'm not setting my schedule around the world cup i mean if u.s right. plays i try to but when I do watch soccer, what I like about it, it's not even the scoring. It's almost the anticipation and the the waiting and the momentum. And I, I feel like there's no instant gratification because you don't know when that's building and going to happen. And I feel like it's monumental to the U.S. compared to the rest of the world. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it, it is. It is. It's definitely a different flow of game than than most of the things we're you know, we as Americans seem to be seem to be into. Although I think it's growing, and and um, with the World Cup in twenty twenty six is Mexico, the United States, and Canada. So we're gonna have, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have. Um, there's games in Boston. Yeah, I could be wrong on this, but I want to say Boston, Toronto, New York, Baltimore, Miami, Houston, San Diego. I probably have some of these wrong, but. Um, where we are, there's probably I think there's at least four cities within like four five hour drive for us. So um, anyway, I'm ex that's 2026, so that'd be fun. And making a I'm making an accountability statement. We're going to do an episode of this podcast from like a local establishment by one of the venues. D definitely, because I'm going to games. There's no there's no if ands or buts. I I will. I definitely will. Not. I didn't know that. Like, that, that's what I mean. I'm so into it. And I've already made plans to go to games now. Uh, I didn't even know it was going to be in the U.S. <laughs> five minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, well, it's weird because there's games in Mexico. So it's kind of North America, Mexico, um, United States and Canada. I don't know why that is. I'm not dialed in with 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 FIFA enough to understand uh, the, the all the all the ins and outs of that piece of it. But it'll it'll definitely be a big deal and i would imagine soccer will get a, a big boost in this country because of it you know more so than it's probably ever ever had i would imagine you know in the traveling i've done with my girls with softball i remember we've played in kansas city we've been out to denver and you have these soccer only stadiums now that you never would have seen 10 years yeah. ago Se seattle's in, or no seattle i think plays where the football team plays do they i i don't yeah. know i don't know 
but I, it's the weirdest. And New Jersey has a stadium only, a soccer yeah. only stadium. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I it's, think my brother's been there. It's definitely catching on. Uh, so lately, the NFL's been going to Europe to play a game. A do, lot. Do, do you think that'll catch on like soccer catches on here? Well, they've been they've been doing it for quite a few a number of years now, and it used to be like one game a year in London. Well, I think there have been at least three in London this season alone, and then there was one in Munich. Um, I believe, yeah, I'm ninety nine percent sure a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I think I think they're gaining some traction there, and I've heard some interviews of people talking about how you know when they first would go to these games in London. It was kind of like, you know, kind of like Americans watching soccer, like what's going on out there? And now there seems to be much more of a understanding of the game. I don't know. That's all. That's all just things I've heard that, that you know, anecdotally. But um, I, I get the sense that, it, that it's growing there a little bit, but I don't think it'll ever overtake, you know, that's the sport of soccer. So we're going to go with this for a minute because we can do what we want to do. Uh yeah you've been to games in europe right yeah real football games i don't mean american football <laughs> what what makes that what what makes it so special european soccer is there a one thing or i mean coming from a standpoint of an american yeah you know what i think a lot of it is i've given this a lot of thought interestingly enough but i think people uh, the, this game has been around forever, right? And it's part of their culture and that kind of thing. Um, and I've, I have been to Tottenham game and I've been to a uh, Paris game, saw Messi play last April. And that was in, in Mbappe and Neymar. If, if anyone's a soccer fan, that those would mean something to them. But you know what it is? I think, I think people love greatness, right? They love to see the best at something. You know what I mean? And, and that something has to be, um unique enough that it's that it you know i can't do it and i recognize this level of perfectionism greatness effort hard work it, it's very much a meritocracy right and i think most people are attracted to meritocracies like i don't want the best i don't want the players you know starting in goal for the united states to be starting in goal because his uncle is the president of the united states soccer federation or whatever it might be right i want the best player out there and 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 you know i, I think we we all want to see that in everything in life like you know i think that's why people get upset sometimes about wealth for some people um in others maybe less so and i'll use that because it kind of fits in a lot with our podcast but like they don't mind seeing someone succeed when it's they put in the work and, and they've made the effort and they've made, it was their ideas or their sacrifices or whatever. But man, when it's, you know, third generation or fifth generation old money kind of thing, and they're just, you're just living off of it. People get resentful of that. I think people like meritocracies and they like to see the best do things. And, and, um, and that's why I think it's popular. I, I, I think it's what you can see. That's the best, most skilled. They're the most skilled people out there. I think people are attracted to that. Isn't isn't that how European soccer works? Is it the Champions League? There's a Champions League. There's a Premier League. There's there's a variety of different. And then there's there's other leagues as well. It, it, it's it's I don't want to say it's complicated, but it's different from what we're used to. Well, I know in one of those, the bottom teams get booted every year. Yeah, t bottom three teams get booted, and the top three teams from the, the league below, if you will, come up. So talk about an incentive to compete, right? I mean, yeah, how cool I mean, is that? As a Pittsburgh Pirate fan, I would love that for baseball. <laughs> Could you They'd imagine? Spend some money, right? Could you imagine if the bottom two teams in the American and bottom two in the National – got booted and the best two minor league teams popped up and everybody's like, ah, you couldn't do that because minor league teams aren't as good. They would be. Yeah. You'd see a different, you'd see a different way of doing things, wouldn't you? And, and especially with the TV revenues, the difference between being in, let's say major league baseball versus triple a baseball in terms of dollars, because of the revenue is so extraordinarily different that the, the incentive, the financial incentive for whoever owns these teams 
would be it would be extraordinary. I bet you, you the shift wouldn't work anymore, and I bet you people would bunt <laughs> to score runs. Don't the game would be more exciting. I know uh, the shift. The shift's killing baseball. You know, I I hate I, I hate that too. But but at the same time, I'm also a guy who's like, hey, you play to win, and that's the best strategy. You know, but but I don't like it as a fan. I'll tell you that. What uh, what are the U.S.'s chances to beat Iran? I think they're they should beat them. I think I mean ultimately because Iran beat. Wales and we tied Wales and we tied England. I think a tie for us probably puts us through to the next round. Um, I think, but don't quote me on that. Well, I looked. Iran has uh, two goals. Two goals. No, no more. More. They've got. They've got a win and a loss, but they have four goals. I think two nothing versus Wales and six to two versus England. I believe. It's interesting. Well, I'll be watching. Uh, who's yeah. who's. Who's the favorite? Is I from what I've watched, it seems like Spain's on fire right now. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure who the, technically. I mean, typically you have Brazil and and Argentina and Germany and Spain and 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 um, you know, Me- Mexico is usually good and you know, but oh, Portugal. I, I mean, I but I don't know who to, England. Oh, definitely England's one of the one of the better teams. So I don't I don't know. I don't follow it internationally close enough. You know, I much more follow the, the leagues like Tottenham and, and that kind of thing. But I just enjoy the game and find it fascinating. And, and definitely it's one of those games where it is it is the hope of what might come. It's a strategy behind it. And it's, it's, just, it's a chess match. It's setting up this and that. And, you know, it's probably not for just the, the typical fan of, hey, who scores the most, you know, whoever scores the most – goals in a game that's the best game you know it's like me with baseball you don't need to i don't need to see a bunch of home runs or runs i love a one nothing game you know because i love what's going on out there but i know i'm unique in that way well it's definitely an american thing because even all our sports statistics are based around who scored the most yeah who True. did the most on offense and yeah yeah we 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 have heroes that are defensive stars or or maybe have lots of assists, but they're two and far between. We like the slam dunk and the home run. Yeah. And yeah. Everything and the, in between. And the but, touchdown. But, it, but it is changing a little. I, I, I wonder, I wonder if COVID's made a big difference for America. Cause it seems like, you know, whether it's the great resignation where everybody wants to quit their job and have experiences over things. I wonder if you start appreciating soccer more because of that, or am I just full of baloney with that statement? Like, I wonder if people appreciate, what's happened in a soccer match more because it's definitely more popular each year. It seems. It seems to be, my guess would be no people still want, they want the quick fix, the easy, the easy way out, the, the, the most exciting, uh, you know, uh, they want to, it's, you know, it's a culture of people now are more inclined to, to watch other people live life through their phones or their computer screens or TVs, the Kardashian effect, if you will, versus living their own life. And they do that because it's exciting, you know, and they, they, they want that. There's far too much living through other people and not living your own life. And that, that to me is a terrifying thing. Um, so my guess would be no, because why that's, it's not exciting enough, but, but for, for most people, not for everyone. All right, so I shouldn't invest in that concept then. I wouldn't, but but I've been I'm I'm wrong a lot. <laughs> no, I I don't think you are with that. But anyways, that yes, that's attitude of gratitude. Let's get. Well, I sorry, I got us off off track. Here. No, but but I don't mind. I mean, we 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 pride ourselves in that we're getting better with just going with the flow, and yeah, yeah. I I think we can still cover it in fifteen minutes, Matt. Yeah, or if we go a little longer, we go a little longer. You know, yeah. I, and I've been thinking about it as we've been talking. We've been talking soccer. I don't know what that means to me in some sense. I haven't given it a tremendous amount of thought, but I, I, I think gratitude is a very important thing. And you know, we've Cam and his, his, you know, and we've gotten into that. And I think we've talked to Cam about that on our podcast. I, 
I think, but I could be wrong because we've had many conversations with Alan. And, and we will again soon when he's we, in town in January. But yeah, right, 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 which will be fun. Um, I think gratitude's super important, but you know, I almost think it's like the chicken or the egg thing. It's like it's a lot easier to have gratitude when things are going well. And then I know that's part of the point. It's like try to have it all the time and look for those look for those things. But I I tend to I tend to feel that at the end of the day, hard work wins and effort wins. And for me, whatever it is I'm trying to do, I feel like I have gratitude in the process of trying to achieve whatever I'm, I, I'm, it is I'm trying to achieve. It's really the process that matters. And that leads to success. And that gives me some sense of thankfulness. But I don't, I'm not a, I think there's a there's a lot of messaging out there and and part of it is that whole um, manifest you know manifest things manifest things we've we've had some great conversations on that and um and, and nobody we've talked to by the way is to the to my recollection has said manifesting is just sitting there wishing and then not doing anything I think that's that's the important point it's it's action 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 and I think that's where um it's hard to be, it's hard to have a lot of gratitude when things aren't going your way and, and th things are, uh, it's a struggle. And I, I, we all have so much to be grateful for, especially, I mean, Thanksgiving's a great, it's cliche, but I find more people are more introspective this, that time of year about the things to be grateful for. I know I've had many conversations this last week with people about that, and I never really would have. Um, so I think it's important, but I, I don't, it's like, it reminds me of the manifestation thing where there's just like certain, sometimes people kind of get the sense that it's all just about, Hey, if you just go in with a positive attitude, everything will always work out. If you just wish hard enough and manifest it, everything will, will work out. Um, I think life's hard. I think life has many, many downs and many challenges, which is why I talk about how I don't believe in working for happiness. I, I believe in in the process and 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 in the in in the adventure and and the meaning. And those are the things that that you know give you those moments of happiness. But you know, you just you find you're happier when you're when you're focused on those other things. And I, I kind of feel like sometimes the, it, people try to talk themselves into this. I'm just, you know, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be thankful for everything. And then everything will, then, then I'll be happy. And I feel like it can be a trap. That's what I fear. So what do you think? Well, there's so many nuggets in here. I wrote them down. Uh, let's see if I can do them in order. Positivity thing. Well, first of all, I love your phrase gratitude in the process. Cause we've, you know, one of our most popular episodes and I've had three people reach out in the last week that I've saw that they've, re-listen to our episode on the process and huh. uh you know a process is is uh i mean we we went over that it's discipline it's not knowing the results of what you're doing but it's the attitude that you're going to just keep pushing through it through the good and bad times it's really cyclical right uh yeah. i know when 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 i coach and when my daughters were were struggling in softball that the mindset and the process is keep doing what you're doing and every bat at bat, you're one step closer to probably breaking out of it because you you just can't you can't be bad forever. I know that sounds goofy the way I'm saying <laughs> it, but <laughs> they're like, yeah, gee, thanks. Uh, and when it comes to being positive, I always tell myself I'm positive I'll get through the bad times because, well, I have a perfect track record doing so as of this point in my life, like I'm still here. So when you said the gratitude and the process, that's what's all going through my mind, you know, getting through and understanding the bad times you in the long run, it, it helps you become better because now you have perspective, right? And something to yep. compare what you've done. And you're almost thankful with your having gratitude to me means just thankful for the process. Like you said, uh, I watched the movie. It's a long story. I'm not going to get into it, but I watched the movie Aladdin where Will Smith's the genie. Okay. Like, uh, and everybody wants those three wishes. Like if, if you had a, a lamp and you could make three wishes, everybody would be happy. Right. But right. you know, the funny thing, uh, whether it's a, a genie or the, the fictional Rumpelstiltskin or something like that, when you wish for something and it comes true, 
you're not going to be happy because there's so many unintended consequences that come from that point. And so you're going to, if, if you're not grateful for the process, like you said, you're just going to be mad or pissed off about something else when you don't get your way. So the fact that you understand I've got my process and I'm probably going to have more good days and bad days. That's probably true gratitude. Not just, not just thankful. I'm having a good day. Did I ramble too much or does no, that no, make no, sense? No, I, I agree with you. And I, I like what you said. And you got my wheels turning a little bit on that too. And, and I think one of the things that you just brought to my, to my consciousness, I guess, is one of the things I worry about, about this hot hole, like just have gratitude. And, and I don't want this to sound negative, but well, if you're just, hey, everything's great, everything's fine. I, I'm just, I, the, I worry about people's then ability or inability to then strive for something better, to, to try to improve on something, to try to be better at something, to try to accomplish more, whatever that accomplishment might be. Hey, look, I'm on the team. I'm just happy to be on the team. Well, maybe you want to start now. Well, I'm just happy to be a starter. Well, maybe you want to, you know, you're hitting 220. Maybe you want to hit 280, you know, uh, whatever the whatever the case may be. So I don't like when people get in the mode of everything I have, whatever it is, is good enough. I'm just, I'm just grateful for this. I'm just grateful for that. There's a ton to be grateful for. And I, you know, I also don't want to sound like, you know, we shouldn't be grateful because we certainly could, but. You know, again, if you believe what I believe, that life is an adventure and it's about, you know, this process and all that, then for me, most things in my life aren't good enough because they're not done. They're never done. So I got to keep going. I got to keep pushing. I got to keep striving. I got to keep learning and failing and, and all those things that lead to my growth. So if I'm just grateful, well, where's I don't know where my motive is to keep pushing for it i can certainly if there's a balance there's a balance there and I, I i think it's important to to express understanding that balance because hey i i like to get up in the morning and i like to start my day with a positive thought that like cam intended and to look at the, you know and, and believe me none of my positive thoughts have anything to do with like making money or owning things or, or they're all they're always family they're always loved ones they're always relationships they're always you know um things like that 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 um are meaningful in in, in the way i look at things and they're never like you know oh i got a i got a boat how grateful am i that i have a boat like that that would never cross my mind when it comes to gratitude um I like getting up and doing that. I think it's a good way to start your day. I think it's a good way to get your mindset in. Um, but I think it's important that, at least in my opinion, we differentiate between that and, hey, let's get good. Let's be thankful for what we have. And now let's go improve our lives in some meaningful manner. That's how I look at it. Yeah, I, I think that's incredible. I I think gratitude, in my opinion, comes with having hope and I, I don't mean hope where I'm wishing on a star or wishing for that lamp. Uh, it's an acronym I've come up with that, that I think about every day in the classroom. Like I want my students to have hope at the end of the day. And what I mean by hope is help others pursue excellence. Like that, that's, that's my acronym for hope. Okay, and, yeah. and I have it written near my desk. Just qu I look at it every day because to me, gratitude is that I get to wake up and help others pursue the same things I'm trying to pursue. Now I say pursue excellence because excellence doesn't always happen. But right. if you if you keep looking for it, all right, you have an opportunity. It doesn't go your way. I'm still grateful for it. But we're gonna we're gonna adapt and 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 check our process out and and look for the next one. Right? There's always that next exit, that next thing. So uh, it's the same thing you do. Like you're of course you're grateful for your family and your friends and your freedom. But but that comes because you're willing to get out of bed and push those comfort zones every day. Yes. It didn't happen because you just look at the mirror and said, I deserve this. And yeah, no. And and you mentioned the word hope. Hope's an interesting one. I, I think it's one of the most powerful things out there because hope 
drives this whole idea of I, I can, right? I can do that because I, I can be hopeful that I can accomplish that without hope. That's a sad, that's sad. I mean, if you don't, if a human doesn't have hope, I don't know where that leads. I think that's, you know, tragedy, I think is where it leads. Oh, uh, you can, there's all sorts of stories, whether you're a prisoner of war or probably mm. incarcerated or in a bad home situation. It, yeah. If you have hope or there's mentorship or something providing you with the opportunity for maybe a better future, if you work hard, that that's hope. Hope isn't wishing on a star, like a, a Disney yes. movie, right? Yeah. And I think, exactly. I think people, I think people mix that up. So when I say I, 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 I try to, uh, help kids realize there's hope for their future. It's, it's not based on wishing it's based on pursuing personal responsibility and action and, yeah. and knowing that. And that's one of the wonderful things about this country. And, and certainly many others is if, if, and I'd like to think this country more than others, but that's up for debate. But, um, that if that if I want to accomplish something, it's reasonable to think you know, that I, if I'm taking those actions on that hope that I can get there or close, right? I can I can get 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 somewhere, and and I agree. I think there's um we hear that word and we just think, you know, I, I picture laying in bed going, oh, why, well, you know, staring up starry at I, oh, one day I hope that this will happen, and then waking up the next morning and doing the same darn thing I've been doing the previous X amount of years without taking any action towards that, what I'm hoping for. Hope is, you know, is really powerful, but it, it requires the action and the personal responsibility behind it. And I'm just glad you, you brought it up because um, it's a, it's, it's one of those words that I think it's can get confusing to people. And again, we come back to the same thing so many times and it's, it's so important. It's like, it's up to you. You got to take action and you've got to believe and you've got to try and you've got to be willing to push those boundaries and make those mistakes and have those failures and grow from them. And whether we're talking about gratitude or hope or personal responsibility or, or truth, meaning trade-offs perspective uh, that we talk about all the time, every single one of them comes down to the, you, you've got to take action in, in, in this life. And if you want something I really believe you can have it. I don't think you can have everything, but I think you can have certain things you put your put your energy and efforts into, and that's a wonderful thing to believe and and think and see come true. Yeah, well, I have that belief sign from Ted Lasso right over in my classroom because yeah. to, to me, hope. Well, and and I have an analogy I want you to comment on in a minute as we close up. But to me, hope and belief aren't based on inaction; they're based on action and a process. Uh, right. My favorite thing, the older I get, and I was not always like this, is I, we both love sports and athletics, right? We're, we're always going to be around them. It's a part of our lives, whether we're going to events or coaching. And I, my favorite part now, I hope that people don't take this the wrong way, is at the end of an event, when there's a winner and a loser, that's just life. Both teams gave it their all. I could add a lot of cliches to that. And you see fans getting mad or angry or yelling or saying these players suck now. You know who you really don't see do anything is all the participants after the game. I know. It's interesting. Whether they're exchanging jerseys in soccer, whether they're lining up shaking hands, whether they almost in a sense were borderline trying to hurt each other based on how how hard they were pursuing victory afterwards they understand what was happening and when you talk i think they're grateful of course they'd rather win but it keeps going back to the phrase you said gratitude in the process they were part of the process fans aren't part of the process yeah, that was i was just going to ask you because everything you say rings so true to me um I, you see see it and i you know as an avid penn state fan Believe me, when they lose, I get I can get upset. You know, it ruined my day. You know, and then but they're all out in the you know middle of the field, hugging each other, and and I'm thinking, why aren't you as upset as I am? You know what I mean? I mean, I I've had those moments. I can relate. Is my point? Why do you think that is? It was going to be my question, and I think you answered it. And by all means, back up. Do you think it's because they participated directly and, 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 and therefore feel some sense of control? that we as fans don't, I mean, why is that? Cause it's so true. It's so true. We get so fired up and then 
they're congratulating each other and, and hugging and, 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 and like, it's kind of like, we'll live to, to battle another day kind of thing. And us as fans can be so upset by the whole thing. What, what do you think it is? I think it's control. And I mean, we could have a whole nother episode on yeah. how much you actually control in your life, but, but they were part of the process and us fans, we base our whole day on whether something we can't even control Right. Makes us happy. And I think that's probably why we get more upset when it doesn't go our way. Our ha We're basing our happiness on something we can't control. Yeah. So I, the older I get, I enjoy almost any event. I almost, almost, because my, my family will probably laugh. I almost don't even have favorite teams anymore. Of course, I have teams I'd prefer win. But right. when I'm into it, watching it, and I, I see what those players, here are the players, it's literally their livelihood, right? Yeah and, yeah, and and they're calmer afterwards than we are. Yeah, and it it just blows my mind, and I think it comes down to they were part of the process. They had control of the process. Yeah, I I, so to, I to me that's gratitude. I I think you're right. I think you're right, and and uh, I I again I, I I see what you see in it, and it's it's interesting. It's, like you said, we could do another you know whole show on it uh, because it is extremely interesting, especially for two people are around it a lot. And, I have been for for a long time, and and uh, um, I don't know. I, it just popped into my head as we were talking about this th that maybe the the control part is 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 a big component of it. I would think so too. I I, I I'll think about that more. I'd like to I'd like to dive into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and we'll end with this: the angriest people, right? And the most critical yeah. people seem to have the least amount of control over the process of their life. And that's, sometimes I think that's why people look to higher powers or people look to mentors or anything that they can feel puts control into the process. And then you're, you're calmer as a result of it. I'll use the word happier, but I think, you know what I mean? You know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll have to continue this, but yeah. let's, end, let's end with this. I think we, we, we solved a major problem in life today, Matt, that gratitude is the process. There's got to be only a handful of problems left uh, that, at this point that we haven't solved. <laughs> and we're only wrapping up season two. Just think what's going to happen when we're into like 10 and 20. Oh, my God. Right. We'll have to invent problems just to solve them, <laughs> which, right, which we can hey, probably I'll... invent several. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Until next time, gratitude is the process. All right. See ya.